is Wisconsin Shoe Guy, and today I'm going totally crazy, and we're going to compare the Alfred Sergeant Moore with a St. Crispin 646. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guy, and our channel, we talk about men's dress wear. Um, it's all about footwear, and we talk about unboxing videos, um, general shoe knowledge, helping you understand the industry and what's happening with your shoes. Uh, we look at shoes critically to determine whether or not they're worth the price that they charge. Uh, we compare shoe to shoe to understand which one is the best of the same category. And then I interview experts in the field to get their take as well. Check out my playlists to see all my videos. Welcome back. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guy, and today we're going to look at the Alfred Sargent Adelaide and uh, talk a little bit about how it compares um, to uh, to some others. Um, I'm going to actually break this into uh, different videos as I as I do it, but I'm going to be doing them in a row. Uh, one of my uh, um, watchers actually suggested that I have a, um, a, a a categorization where I look at the last. And I look at um, some of the, the structural things like the, uh, the sole and, and things like that separately than I look at the quantitative measurements. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to do that for each of these. So I'm just going to repeat this piece in each of the videos as I compare this shoe uh, to several others. So with that said, here we go. So the Alfred Sargent Moore is an Adelaide. Um, it is a... Uh, a cap toe Adelaide. So Adelaide's can, can come with a cap toe or can come with a medallion toe. I've never seen them with a plain toe, but I'm sure that that's possible as well. Um, they have heel counters usually, um, although that is also an option. Uh, so like there's an Allen Edmonds Adelaide called the Cornwallis that does not have heel counters. Um, and, um, and actually has a medallion, okay? but no cap. Um, so, so there's a lot of different options that you can do. Um, as, as we look at this particular one, um, uh, we are going to look at the last first. Um, now, the last is uh, a very important part of the shoe, right? It, does, it is the overall shape and is going to give you the overall impression of the shoe when it's on the ground. Um, this is especially important for hole cuts because hole cuts have um, uh, very little adornment, right? They're just a plain piece of leather. And so the last is going to be what overall is the shape of the shoe. Um, well, that's true on a cap toe Oxford as well. Um, the cap toe Oxford has a cap, but the vamp here um, really gets its structure and shape from the last. And so you can have a um, hole cut shoe or, or a cap toe Oxford shoe that can look like a clog, or you can have one that looks like a very sleek um, piece of footwear. So uh, it's important to know. So as we look at the last here, um, this is a, a good sweeping last. It has a nice line uh, as it comes back toward the heel. Okay, so the way that it gradually goes back uh, is really good. It has plenty of room here uh, for, for your foot. Um, so uh, I have a relatively wide foot and um, I actually sized down for this um, in order to be able to get it. So the, the ball is a little bit on the tight side, but the rest of the shoe, um, the, the volume at the front um, is really, really good for my foot. Um, a little bit of uh, pinching here on my pinky toe. Um, which I may have to put a shoe stretcher in um, in order to accommodate, but so far so good. Um, the heel is nice and tight, um, so you get that nice splush when you put your foot in. Um, and, uh, you know, use a shoehorn, right? Everybody says that. I, I don't always, but um, what I do is I hold the back of it as I pull it onto my foot. Um, and I do like to have that, that uh, the splush to, to make sure that my heel is secure, because nothing is worse than having the, the heel slide on your foot. If that happens, then you get blisters, and that, that sucks. So... Um, so anyway, so um, the other thing that I really like about lasts is the way the toe uh, is like a chisel, right? So this has this part here, it narrows, and then it has a relatively flat part here. Now it's not a square. Um, sometimes they'll call this a soft square, um, and there is a lot of variety when it comes to this in shoes. So as you look at the series of videos with the Alfred Sargent compared to the other one, you'll see that there are some that are more rounded than others, and some that are quite quite sharp. Now that is also true here where it rises on the sides. So that can be um, a really big, um, big change in the shoe. So uh, as the last goes, right, you have the way the toe is, you have the sides. Right? 
And then you have the shape here, the sweeping part. Okay? And then of course you have the heel and how well that fits to your foot. Okay? Now, some shoes are gonna have a high instep last and some are gonna have a low instep last. What does that mean? It means that um, the amount of leather here can vary. Um, a lot of times what people want is they want a shoe that has very little in the way of a V-gap, okay, where um, this part just comes together very, very closely. And, and that can look really good, um, but a V-gap doesn't mean that the shoe doesn't fit you well. Um, sometimes if you have no V-gap up here, um, the shoe can be much too big. So it's a real catch-22, right? I prefer to have it with no, very little V-gap, uh, but at the same time, if there's no V-gap and they come together, um, that's sometimes a sign that the shoe is too big. So something to keep in mind as you're, uh, as you're, as you're looking at, at sizing um, and trying to keep it in. Now, um, the other piece, of course, is that leather does stretch, so you could have a V-gap on day one. I have a pair of CNES Adelaides that um, uh, when I... Uh, when I first got them, the V-gap was about an inch and a half, and, and now it's down to almost zero. So again, it depends on the quality of the leather and how much they'll stretch. Um, the higher-end shoes stretch less, but they still stretch. It's leather, right? So something to consider. Um, so, uh, so anyway, so that's the last. So let's look at the sole. Um, this is part of the Alfred Sargent exclusive range and um, has a really nice sole. It has a beveled waist, um, has a blind stitch sole. Now, um, this is also made uh, with an arc, oak bark tanned sole. So the leather is very, very long lasting. Um, I have another pair of these that I've had for about a year and the wear is about the same as this. Um, so it just wears off the, 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 the ink that you do when you wear it the first couple times and then um, it uh, will just last and last and last and last. Uh, this is now like if you look at a JR sole, that's a double oak bark tanned um, and um, that will last longer. Um, but this is also a much better than you know, some of your chrome tan soles or, or something like that, that, that that is available on some other shoes. Now, how long should a sole last? This is a really, really hard question to answer because um, soles are really dependent on the way you walk. Um, it's your um, the, the surface that you're walking on, it's the, the your weight, your uh, the way you walk. Sometimes people have, um, they, they walk like, like this, okay? And so you can wear down the sole here. And it doesn't really matter where you wear the sole down first. Once the sole is worn down in one particular area, uh, it's time to replace it. You know, you can't replace part of the sole. I know some people um, have done things where they replace only the front half and, and so forth. And you can do that and it saves some money, but it really doesn't lengthen the, the length of the sole uh, because you do um, want to make sure that you're using the same um, stitch holes on the welt. Otherwise, you have to replace the welt. And when you replace the welt, that actually diminishes the life of the sole a lot, which is another reason that a lot of people prefer to go to a cobbler instead of sending their shoes to the factory because the factories have to put so many shoes through the um, rotation that they'll actually remove the welts and put new welts on because it's actually faster for them. So something to consider. So like when I, I used to send my shoes to Allen Edmonds to have them recrafted and it's, it's, a, it's a fine practice, right? But um, the shoes can only be recrafted three times. And then after that, um, and I've actually had it where on the second time, um, they were too tight. And it was because the new welt went on and it was just a little bit tighter. So food for thought. Um, but anyway, this is the Alfred Sargent. That is the last. That is the sole. You can see the heel here has um, this beautiful um, split here um, with a lot of leather and a little bit of rubber. Um, that actually helps it wear down slower, um, which is all about extending the life of the shoe. Um, so that is the Alfred Sargent. I'm going to do something really different today. I haven't done this before. I am going to introduce a shoe into the shoe battle that is light years ahead of the shoe that we're comparing to. Um, and I've been uh, accused of doing this a couple times before. Uh, but today is even going a step further. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about this shoe, which is an Adelaide. Um, this is a St. Crispin model 646. Um, and this is a custom one that I had done for me. And I'm going to compare this to our Alfred Sargent Moore. Now, listen, there is a big difference in price here. Okay. Um, there is close to a thousand dollar difference in price between these two shoes. And so it's not necessarily a fair comparison, but I want to talk about what some of those things are so that you have the ability to understand it. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the, um, the St. Crispin and what the different components are um, from a last in structure perspective. And um, we'll get into the quantitative stuff in the next section. But first, this um, and, and this is not necessarily true of St. Crispin's. This is just true of this model, okay? But this is a whole cut shoe, and it has the um, pattern sewn into it, right? And then reversed. 
uh, for the Adelaide. Okay, so so that is that is a pretty big difference, and it's um, it's also got a very very um, what they call an aggressive last. Um, this is the B chisel, and it uh, um, has very very high sides. It has a very high slope, um, and it has very flat up at the top. It also has a peak cap, which is uh, which is different. Uh, the re the re reverse here on the Adelaide, the U throat, um, is uh, relatively symmetrical. Um, it's kind of like a rope off kind of thing instead of having multiple pieces of leather, um, but it 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 does not um, it does not taper up very very sharply, um, and um, the uh, the heel caps or the heel counters, uh, which are also again just um, there's just this uh, rope here in between to keeping them apart, um, is is also there as well. Now uh, this has a seam in the back, okay, um, and it's important to note that St. Crispin does make. Um, whole cuts and, and different shoes without a seam, uh, that was just not an option that I chose on this one. Um, now, um, you talk about asymmetry, that is significant asymmetry. If you look at how the hook is on the shoe tree here, and then you look at how the sh hook on the shoe tree there, there's a pretty b darn big difference, and this adds tremendous comfort to the shoe. Then if we go to the sole, and this sole has some things that, uh, you know, are just not normal on shoes, right? I had my initials put in, um, and I had a toe plate put in, but the toe plate, anybody, you can add to any shoe. You just go to your cobbler. Uh, I had these done at the factory. Um, and uh, they also have a pegged waist. Now, I have not seen a pegged waist on a lot of options for shoes outside of, like, Lucchese boots um, and, and uh, St. Crispin's, but this is a really nice feature. Um, keeps it really, really tight. Now, for the welt on these... Um, I went a totally different direction, and instead of doing a regular hand-stitched welt where it's a leather welt, I had a Norvegese welt done in where it's the 180 degree Norvegese welt like this. So these stitches across the front are not decorative, they are holding the insole and the sole together. So pretty, uh, pretty, pretty fancy and uh, pretty, pretty cool there. Um, now, and then you, lo you look at the, uh, the the soles themselves. Um, you know, one of the big differences between a um, be between a, um, St. Crispin and some of the others, when, when you're asking for um, a double sole, instead of saying, I want a six millimeter sole, um, or, or instead of saying, hey, I want a single sole or a double sole, and then the double sole has this like, really, really thin midsole in it, with St. Crispin, you're actually saying, hey, I want a six millimeter sole, I want an eight millimeter sole, or I want a 10 millimeter sole. And then when you look at it, after you receive it, um, <laughs> There's one piece of leather in the sole, okay? The leather is extremely crafted, okay? So it has the, uh, the complete shape there. The shank there is very strong, holds up your foot. These provide better support than almost any shoe that I have in my arsenal. Um, they're just very, very comfortable. And um, as Adelaides go, um, they just have a very, very sleek shape. You know, even if you take the bee chisel and this, this whole thing away, it's just a beautifully shaped shoe. And, um, you know, something I really like. Now, part of the pricing for this, the reason that it was so high is because I had this put on a custom last. Um, I don't have to pay that price every time, so when I ordered my next pair of St. Crispin's, it just came uh, without having that extra charge. Um, so it's, uh, it's a very cool uh, thing. Um, of course, the custom, the shoe trees uh, that come with these are actually made for them because they're made on your last. So that is another, uh, you know, component of them as well. So um, just an just a absolutely beautiful shoe, well put together and a, a different take on, on uh, the way that that is uh, put together. Now, um, the uh, soles are stitched onto the weld here, so that is not different um, on these than it is on, on the uh, Alfred Sargent. So let's look at them together. Okay. Um, it's very similar in proportions, you know, the um, toe caps, a little different, but not significantly so. But overall, very similar shoes. Just the quality and the uh, details are just much, much greater on the St. Crispin. So uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at some of the finishing on these shoes. So we're gonna start with the, uh, the Alfred Sargent. And I think that the Alfred Sargent has a, a good amount of finishing, but some of it is left intentionally plain. And so that's going to be part of what we're looking at today is what is left intentionally plain um, and what is uh, 
uh, um, and what is and what is not. So we're going to start with the pinking, right? And the pinking is the area along the cap, along the edge, along the top line. Um, and I'm going to say that this pinking is relatively fine. Um, I do find it helpful to actually measure the pinking because sometimes um, that can help uh, determine whether it's actually finer or not. And this is looking at like three millimeter pinking and it is consistent across the whole shoe. Um, when, you look, when it comes to fudging, and fudging is along the edge here on the top of the welt, when they take that wheel and they um, put in that really nice uh, pattern, uh, there is no fudging on the Alfred Sargent at all. Uh, not, not even on the inside. So it's just, it, it's relatively uh, straightforward. Now the sole edge itself, which is right here, okay, this has been, uh, ha this has been finished. So it has a ridge at the top and it has a ridge at the bottom. Okay, and you can feel that. And then when it comes to um, actually by the waist where it's beveled, um, the sole has like a rounded edge along the edge there. So it's rounded here or beveled, okay? And then it's ironed with the groove at the top and the bottom all the way around here. So it's like a 180 iron. And then the, uh, the, the rest of that 270 is, uh, um, is got that bevel shape to it. Now, um, the heel itself, somebody used a wheel and artistically uh, did a little, uh, little finishing piece on the edge there um, as well. Um, as I stated earlier, the heel cap or the um, heel counter is actually in two pieces with a seam down the middle. There is stitching on either side of that seam instead of just having a plain seam. And of course there's the flap over the top as well, uh, which is pretty common on these. Um, the, uh, the counter actually extends beyond the heel. Um, these heels, as I said before, are actually really short. And usually they, um, that centimeter where it is short is normally taken up by the heel actually going out there. So that, that's an interesting detail there. I think they wanted to make room for the bevel. That's just my opinion. But again, I'm not a shoemaker. I have no idea in terms of why they would do that. So that's just my assumption in, in looking at it. Um, and of course, we said on the sole before, the sole is beautiful, has all this, uh, um, you know, it has the bevel waist and it has this, uh, um, you know, uh, blind stitch on there as well. When we look at extras, um, you know, there isn't a lot of hand stitching. When it comes to the skiving, and, and when, what skiving is, is when you put a, a toe cap on and, you know, they, they don't actually have the leather going all the way underneath, so the cap doesn't go over. They're actually joining two pieces of leather here. Um, what they do is they thin the leather so that this gap from the cap to the vamp is as thin as possible. And I'm going to say that they did not skive this extremely thin. Um, when I look at some of my other shoes, which will, uh, which, I'll, which I'll look at in my um, in the in the different battles here, um, I, I know that that is actually thinner. Now, in terms of actually measuring it, I can't tell whether that's actually a whole millimeter of thickness or not. I will tell you that it's thicker than my tape. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's more than a millimeter, um, and I'm gonna use that as my judge. Right? Is it thicker than the tape? Can I still feel the tape when I put the tape on top of it? And in this case, I do. So that, that's going to say, I'm, I'm going to say that those edges are on the, uh, on the thick side, um, on the Alfred Sargent. Um, in terms of uh, other pieces, um, that's the, the last things we're going to measure are the density of the uh, stitches. Okay, and this is just a, uh, a very, very straightforward measurement. We have one, two, three, four, four and a half. Four and a half stitches per centimeter across the uh, top here. I always measure at the cap toe on Adelaide's because it's always the same. And then when it comes to the, uh, the sole, uh, this is normally three. For the sole, it is, I'm gonna say three and a half, almost four. Almost four stitches per centimeter on the sole. So that is, uh, that is the Alfred Sargent. So here we go. We're going to take a look now at the St. Crispin Mod 646. Now, I, um, I said that these were reverse stitched before, but as I look at them more closely, um, you can tell I'm wearing my glasses now, um, there is what appears to be hand stitching on them. Now, I can't tell whether or not they are reversed and the hand stitching is on the inside and that's what I'm seeing or not. 
uh, but take the, uh, the reverse portion on this with a grain of salt because I just don't know. Okay. Um, the one thing I'll say about St. Crispin's is that their descriptions are not necessarily the greatest. I could ask them. Um, they're very communicative. If you ask specific questions, they'll tell you. But um, the website itself has a picture of the shoe and, uh, you know, picture speaks a thousand words. So um, uh, just, to, just to review as we look at these, um, these are um, closed channel, not blind stitched. So there is a ridge that uh, they were obviously shut, hammered down with, uh, with a hammer. Um, they are pegged on the soles. Um, from a finishing perspective, there is no pinking. Okay? Um, from a fudging perspective, there's no fudging on this side of the shoe. But on this side of the shoe, there is some. So there is some fudging, but the, candidly, the, <laughs> the, the welt edge is so narrow that um, you can barely see it. But in this one space where kind of the spade sole comes out, Right there, you can see some fudging, which is kind of funny. Uh, the fudging is, of course, aligned perfectly uh, with the stitches, um, and uh, and does does you know you can see that it is aligned where you can see it, but um, you know the edge here is also absolutely clean, um, so that uh, you can't uh, there is nothing that kind of goes over the edge like there are on some other shoes. Um, the uh, the Norvegies welt is also 100% clean. That's not always the case. I have a pair of Bontonis uh, where the Norvegian stitching is uh, a little sloppy. Um, and I, uh, you know, look, this is all done by hand. I'm not um, questioning uh, Bontoni in any way by saying that, but I am saying that this is super, super clean. Um, it is a little bit more casual because it has a contrast color to it. If I didn't like the way that looked, I could just use dark um, shoe polish on it and it would, uh, it would polish over the, um, the stitches, but I'm not going to do that because I like the contrast. I think that it, it adds adds something to the shoe. Um, you know, if you look at the sole edge, this is ironed completely flat all the way around, and then it is beveled by the waist on both sides uh, where it's pegged. Okay, so they they have a pegged waist on this instead of a fiddleback waist. Um, the arch is absolutely tremendous. It feels really really good on the uh, foot when you walk. Um, so, uh, really, uh, kudos go out to St. Crispin's on that. Um, there is no skiving because there is no seam, okay? Um, and there is, uh, um, there is no upper stitch density. There's only the hand stitching that's here, uh, which is consistent with really, really good Norvegian stitching or something like that. Um, but the look of this is, I mean, it's just phenomenal. I mean, you cannot... You see the stitch stitches on the sides, but you can't tell how this has worked. That's why I said that it was reversed. Um, and it's just, it's, it's gorgeous. I mean, that's the only word for it. Um, now, their, their sole stitch density, um, I, I can measure, uh, but I can't measure any upper stitch density. But the soles themselves, there are three and a half um, stitches per centimeter. So that's, uh, that's actually pretty good. Most of the shoes that I've looked at as part of this series have been at three, but the Alfred Sargent is at um, three and a half, four. So um, I'm gonna give it an equivalent there. Um, so when we look at the shoes side by side, um, you know, it's a different design. Um, it's a different type of material, so it's very hard to see a difference there. Um, you know, there is the single seam in the back. The difference is that's the only seam on the whole shoe. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty big difference there. Um, so, I mean, it's, again, it's, it's hard to compare, right? It's hard to compare um, a 1,200-euro shoe with a, a, a 475-pound shoe, right? But it's, um, it's also um, the differences in the lasts are dramatic on this. This has this very aggressive uh, bee chisel, um, and this has the, um, the, the, the last, but it's really uh, designed as a more refined um, Adelaide. It's not super aggressive. Uh, it's not calm, it's not round, it's not boring, um, but it is, uh, it is very different. So uh, both have that uh, beautiful sweeping look. Um, now I will say from an asymmetric standpoint, um, you know, you can see underneath the, uh, the tree on this side and you cannot see the hole at all on that side. So it, it, this is very asymmetric. Um, and uh, that, that is uh, a really good degree of comfort. Um, so uh, at the end, um, it's just, it's, it's a beautiful way 
of doing it. Now, I will say that the clicking on St. Crispin's, I believe, are done for each shoe. Um, this is, you know, a personal last for me, so that um, makes a difference as well. The lining on, uh, on the St. Crispin is, uh, it feels like upper leather on a shoe, um, where this does not. I mean, it's veg tanned leather, it's nice, but it's not, uh, it's not quite the same degree. So, from a detail standpoint, the, the St. Crispin's are definitely a step ahead, but as well they should be, right? Now, I did have um, uh, my initials put into this, and I had the, um, the toe cap put in. Uh, as extras that I chose in the factory as well, um, and that is uh, that is uh, nice. Now the trees themselves, I don't have trees for the Alfred Sargent, so it's not necessarily something I can compare to, but you can see the trees are absolutely made for the shoe. Um, they have the exact piece on the last, and then of course they have my last number on the bottom um, so that they can identify them as mine. And you can see it's it's a 100% lasted tree, um, you know, no springs. It's It just goes in and it just fits perfectly. You know, so just uh, just the way that uh, that goes. So that is St. Crispin's. Now we have the crazy ones. We are talking about what is better in conclusion between these two shoes, which are really not in the same ballpark in terms of shoes. Uh, quality materials, construction, craftsmanship. Yeah, St. Crispin's has it. Um, but think about if you are on a tight budget, if you do not have the money to buy a St. Crispin's, the Alfred Sargent is a fantastic alternative and gets you get a whole lot of shoe uh, for what you get with this. Um, it is really a, a really well-made shoe and um, you know really good marks for this. So something to think about.